Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the new Lawrence and Lee musical version of The Necklace, starring Gordon McRae and his brilliant young guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another world premiere is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The music of the immortal César Franck is the setting for tonight's play, an equally immortal tale by Guy de Maupassant. Imagine yourself in the Paris of gaslight and horse-drawn carriages. Dorothy Warren's shoulders, Mathilde. I am her husband, the ill-fated Pierre. In the necklace. Are you unhappy with your husband? Oh, he's good to me, but oh, Pierre is just a clerk in the Ministry of Education. And oh, how I long for high ceilings and tapestries like these. Mathilde, I shouldn't have come to see you, Catherine. It only makes going back to our dingy life all the harder. Silk and gown, gold and ring. Remember, Mathilde, if there's ever anything I can do for you, oh, you're a good friend. Goodbye, Catherine. <laughs> Mathilde! Mathilde, I am home. <laughs> Darling, what's wrong? Why are you crying? Why? Oh, Pierre. Life is gray and weary. Every day is weary. What's the use of trying? Nothing left but crying. Are you sad because I did not bring you home? Oh, Open up this letter. Much better. What is it, Pierre? An invitation. Look at it. Read what it says. Invitation to a mass ball. Oh. It will be very exclusive. Only a few of them went to the clerk. Oh, Pierre. Is it true, my dear, that you and my cow go dancing? That we're going dancing. I need a gown. A gown. I can't 
have a new gown, Pierre. I won't go. Mathilde. I won't go and look like a poor relative. Well, how much will it cost, a suitable gown? Oh, uh, 400 francs. So much? But it must be stylish. Will it make you very happy, Mathilde? Oh, I shall be the happiest woman in all the world. Well, shall I uncover my eyes now? Yes. Yes, you may look at me now. Oh, this cannot be Mathilde Boiselle, wife of that poor clerk in the Ministry of Education. Oh, it is a pretty dress, isn't it? Oh, you must be a princess, a queen. No. No, I look poor. I've got to have some jewels, Pierre. Will you pluck them from the diamond tree in the public park? I know where I can get some jewels. I'll be back in an hour. Catherine, would you do me a great favor? Why, of course. I am going to a masquerade. My dress will be a rather somber shade. I need a gem, a diadem. Perhaps you'd like this brooch of jade. No, something brighter, I think. Something to catch the light. These pearls? Hmm, I don't think they blend with my complexion. Diamond necklace, how beautiful. Dear Katerina, me, I take this diamond necklace for thee. It sparkles like a starry pleiade. I'll be so glad in this I'll return it to you tomorrow, Catherine. I promise. France, for I have the most glamorous wife in all the world. Twilight soon will fade. I'll meet you at the masquerade. few more francs, my sweet. We may as well finish off the evening in grand style. After all, how often do we live like nobility? Or like royalty. Oh, Pierre. The ball is over. The dancing is swirling. Where is the necklace? Where is it, dear? Where did you put it? What? 
the diamonds. They are not around your neck. Oh, they've slipped off. Uh, are they in the folds of your cloak? No. Well, look for them on the floor of the cab and the cushions. Driver, stop! I had them when I left the ballroom. I remember touching the necklace as I came down the spiral staircase. They aren't here. Mathilde, the jewels are gone. <laughs> return for the second act of The Necklace in just a moment. You know, when you come right down to it, few people in the United States have a greater stake in the continued health and strength of America's railroads than you who own automobiles. I'm afraid I don't quite understand. What have the railroads got to do with my enjoyment of my car? Well, to begin with, your car could not have been built without railroads. For to build automobiles the way they are built in America takes the low-cost mass transportation of raw materials and parts, which only railroads can provide. And the same kind of thing is true of the highways you drive on. I can see that all right, but I've got my car, and the highways I use are already built. So what can the railroads do to help me enjoy driving my car now? Railroads have a lot to do with that, too, because they take the vast bulk of America's freight traffic and move it on their own highways of steel. Just imagine what things would be like on the public highways if the freight traffic that now moves on the railroads had to be carried on the roads on which you drive. Heaven forbid, I never thought of that. You can bet I'm in favor of keeping boxcars on the railroads where they belong. Yes, the railroads mean a lot to you as a car owner. And the more the nation's freight is moved on the privately owned steel highways of the railroads, the less will be the wear and tear to the public highways. The lower will be the cost to you of building and maintaining those highways. And the greater will be your satisfaction and safety every time you use your car. Section of The Necklace, set to the majestic music of César Franck, starring Gordon McRae as Pierre and Dorothy Warren Scholl as Mathilde. With Mary Dean as Katerine. The dawn was gray across the rooftops as I retraced every step we had walked. Every inch of the ballroom, the staircase, the cracks in the pavement. The gutters along curbstones. But I came back to my wife empty-handed. Nothing. What must we do, Mathilde? What can we do? I shall go to Catherine and tell her what happened. She's rich. She has everything. It won't matter to her. No. She gave the necklace to you in friendship, in confidence. We must replace it. Ah, madame has the true eye for beauty. This necklace is our prize. In my entire store, there is not such a necklace. Uh, I think it is identical. Even the clasp is the same. What is the price of this diamond necklace, please? Ah, uh, this necklace is a great bargain, monsieur. 36,000 francs. How can we raise 36,000 francs? Oh, it's a fortune, Pierre. We can sell the furniture for a good price. Oh, shall we live in bare rooms, then? I'll borrow the rest. We'll mortgage everything. Oh, we'll be in debt for years. We have no choice, my sweet. My word, my signature is honored everywhere. I am not a cheat. If I am nothing else, I am an honest man. And for your honesty, you are willing to pay such a price. It may be all that is left to me, my honesty. But I cannot change. Even if it means selling our very souls to the moneylenders, Mathilde. 
we must do the honest thing. Catherine, thank you for letting me borrow the necklace. You should have returned it sooner. Matilda, I might have needed it. Did your friend notice? She didn't even open the case. Good, good. Now, I have found a very reasonable room, Matilda. I shall have to get some work to do at night, bookkeeping or copying. You can do laundry, perhaps, or housework a few days a week. Oh, Pierre, I was born for better things. How many people, Matilda, are permitted to live the lives they were born for? We seen already in time slow-flowing stream. Oh, how can life seem so brief when the days are longer than it yourself, Mathilde. That old scrub woman? Is that Mathilde Loisel? With blistered knuckles and hair like dirty snow? Everyone must grow old. Oh, yes, but everyone does not grow ugly. Oh, I want some music. I want music to make me feel beautiful, even if I cannot look beautiful. Dance with me, Pierre. I have forgotten how. Oh, there was only one dance for us. One glorious masquerade, and there might have been so many. The saddest words of all I might have been If I could only live that night again I might have been with my Do not think about the might have been and do not try to live at night again. Oh, dreaming is over. Dreaming is over. Might have been. Might have been. What dreams might have been. Might have been. Twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two francs. There. Thank you, Monsieur Loisel. That closes our account. Shh. My wife is sleeping. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, it will seem strange not to be coming here any longer. You have been our most regular caller for many years. Let me think. 
You made your loan when my father had the business, I believe. That is correct. My father has been dead for 11 years. And I have been dead for 14. But I do not understand. A bad joke, my friend. For 14 years, I have owed you money. You and a score of others. But it is all paid back now. 36,000 francs. And as much again in interest. But it's paid. And now I am resurrected from the dead. You are an honest man. Thank you, sir. I thank you humbly. Well, good night. Remember me to your wife. Oh, I think you gave me one franc too much. Eh? This coin is yours. Mine? Good night, Monsieur Loiselle. This coin is mine? <laughs> Mathilde! Mathilde! What, what is it? What, what, Pierre? Look, this franc is ours. Ours, Mathilde, to spend as we like. We have one franc, one franc that's our very own, Mathilde. How shall we spend it? What if we have one franc for our very own, Pierre? Can we sing anywhere? Is it free anywhere? Start over, we'll start over again, Matilda. Can we start over when are we over? We can begin our lives all over again, Matilda. How can we see again? too old to dance, Mathilde. Then I shall buy flowers. Flowers for my charming wife. Pierre. Oh, Pierre. All the flowers have died for me long, long ago. All the flowers have died for me many believe I know you. I know you. Fourteen years have hardly changed you at all. Oh, dear Lord, can it be Mathilde? Yes. And this is my husband. Does she know Mathilde? No. What should I know? Because of your necklace. My wife is old before her time, and I am staring into the grave. I don't understand. You returned my necklace. A duplicate, Catherine. I lost the jewels you gave me. My husband and I have slaved for 14 years to pay for the accident of one tragic night. Oh, my poor friends. The necklace you borrowed, Mathilde, it was made of paste. What? Worth at the most a few hundred francs. <laughs>
Dorothy Warren Show will be back in just a moment. Our thanks, too, to Mary Dean, Byron Kane, and all the members of our company. The song Masquerade was composed by John Jacob Loeb and Paul Francis Webster. The music for the necklace was taken from the great themes of Cesar Franck's D minor symphony. The libretto and lyrics were by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? These days, members of the American Legion, men who have done so much in war and in peace to help build a stronger, better, more secure America, are making plans to attend their national convention in New York City at the end of August. And the Legionnaires who will have the most fun are those who will travel to the convention by train. They're going to bypass the strain of long, hard driving on crowded highways. They're going to relax in air-conditioned comfort in their hotels on wheels and arrive at the convention rested and ready for the time of their lives. And that's a mighty good idea when you and your family take a vacation. Travel the easy, safe way, by train. You'll be glad you did. Thank you, Marvin. And now, dear friends, here again is lovely Dorothy Warren Show. And Dorothy, did you enjoy singing the melodies of Cesar Franck's great D minor symphony? Well, it was a thrilling experience, Gordon, and I hope all our Railroad Hour friends enjoy these adventures into the realm of symphonic music, too. Well, you might say we're trying to bring you a brand new art form, giving famous stories a new voice with great music. Um, what's our musical story next week, Gordon? Well, Dorothy, we have a complete change of pace. It's called a love song, and our own maestro, Carmen Dragon, has written a title melody in three-quarter time which will set your heart singing of good old Vienna. Ah, oh, it sounds wonderful. So we will be meeting on the Prater next Monday, eh? Well, uh, it's a date, Dorothy. All aboard! Folks, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so on till next Monday night and the Railroad Hour premiere of Love Song. This is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Gordon McRae can be seen starring in Warner Brothers' About Face. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. The proceeding was transcribed. Next, Barbara Gibson stars on the Telephone Hour on NBC.